the death size. We all go a little mad sometimes. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? You're gonna need a bigger boat. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I'll play again. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Killer, I'm just gonna bash you. What's blood for? If not for shooting. Welcome to 31 Days of Horror Movies. I am your host, Sam Johnston. And back with me some more familiar faces. Mari, Yay. Leslie, Adam, back again. And we just watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 from 1986. Wow. Chains. Wow. Chains. Directed Chains. by Toby Hooper and written by L.M. Kit Carson. Mm -hmm. A radio host is victimized by the Cannibal family mm -hmm. as a former Texas marshal hunts them. This movie, I think, does a pretty good job of kind of standing on its own. I don't think that... You all needed to see the first one necessarily no. to no. understand what was going on. I mean, yeah, there's not like you kind of get it from the title. What's gonna like <laughs> all the? There weren't any surprises. Yeah. No, right. we're in Texas. There are mm -hmm. chainsaws. There's yeah. a massacre. Mm -hmm. Done. Like, couple times. Done. Yeah. Couple yeah. times. Couple massacres. And this movie is very brutal. Yeah. Um, and that I think is also a testament to the makeup and special effects designer of this movie, which is Tom Savini, Amazing. who is a very infamous uh, horror special effects designer. He's actually a Vietnam vet as well. So uh, he, was oh. a, he was a medic in Vietnam. So he, he, saw, he saw a lot of shit. The sound, I think, uh, which is such a big part of what you think of with a chainsaw. You know what a chainsaw sounds like immediately. Yeah. So when you hear that, you know what's coming. Mm -hmm. But also the other sounds in this movie too just felt very loud and yes. intense. They were yelling constantly mm -hmm. and constantly talking and yelling. Yeah. It was just, everything was just very in your face and in your mm -hmm. ears uh, to make you like feel like almost um, I wanted to scream Underneath too. Everything. I wanted to scream yeah. too. You're buried. Yeah. You're buried in the sound and the images that are hard to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, which makes and yeah, it everything was filled. The whole space, the whole scene of it was They're talking filled over each other. Over too. each other, um, and that is something that I definitely wrote down. It's like not a silent film. The previous ones built suspense through the silence, mm -hmm. but with this one, we didn't need to because it's a f what the weapon we're using is a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. And then we start off with our two awesome, <laughs> frat awesome boys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> frat boy in love guys. with the one with the glasses. Yeah, uh, we. Uh, I was surprised that they are, were characters that I hated as much as. Oh, I get it. Them. Oh yeah, and immediately, <laughs> immediately hate them. Immediately hate them. Absolutely. And then Just there are waiting, more characters like, in the movie that you hate them. They ha they don't stop talking or laughing or screaming or shooting. It's all very loud. Just like we're, when we're with the Sawyers, mm -hmm. the killer family, the cannibal family. It gives us a taste of the brutality uh, to come and the intensity to come. So that way, when we do come back to it, it's not so, so jarring. It makes sense then because we've returned to it. Mm -hmm. And that I, I really actually liked that first kill on the bridge when they're... Yeah. You, at first, it just looks like a dead body kind of zombie kind of character but then we mm -hmm. realize oh man like someone's wearing that dead body huh. as like a costume or like a disguise it ends with the guy getting cut across the head yeah. with the chainsaw oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and it kind of like starts just like sliding off and then it straight up pops off and pfft. and you see it from behind yeah, you see right? it from behind yeah. and the yeah. blood spurts coming out and then we're with stretch for yes. the rest of the time yes and she is a radio dj and I mean, all she she's just a reporter who wants her big break. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that is her that is her motivation for this movie. Mm -hmm. She is the small town radio host who's ready to make waves. I think that also kind of established too that Stretch is um, she's definitely a go getter, obviously. Yeah. And then she does call out LG for calling her darling. I think mm -hmm. that's, like don't. It's not even like a jokey way of she's like saying, "Oh, don't call me that." She's like, "Don't call me darling." Don't. She's like very straight up with him. Mm -hmm. I think she's. Uh, it's established that she can hold her own a, mm. a little bit. Lefty also, uh, when he goes to the scene, uh, the crime scene of the two kids, he knows that it's these chainsaw murderers. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like discussing with the the cop. Yeah, with that cop who just has that one scene. Mm -hmm. and yeah, never asshole comes. Yeah, 
He's just like, hey, I was I was told for you to get out and not like bother with this story because there's no more chainsaw massacres. Like, this is something else. There's these kids. It was and very much a Jaws style. Like, there's a bunch of people in town. Uh, Don't cause a panic. Yeah. yeah. Then Lefty says, "Hell is exactly what they raised." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, um, it was that line was towards. The chainsaw, the Sawyers, right? For the murderers. Is it? Because they kind of tied into the kids of just like, they brought their own destructions. Like, or they... the town? Town that has been ignoring massacres going on for yeah. years. Yeah. Like, You've raised for... your own hell. I thought he was also kind insane, of. though. Abs. He was. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah. you're crazy too. He was. But, but... we know why. Because it's established that his brother was murdered by. By Motherface, yeah. Yeah. He's I, unhinged. He's getting on. I mean, he's been on this for 15 years, probably seen some crazy shit and mm-hmm. been completely gaslit the whole time. Mm-hmm. They're not around anymore. They're gone, blah, blah, blah. He's definitely, when we meet him, I think at his the end of his rope. Uh, and definitely at the end of his wits. So, yeah. Stretch comes to him with this recording and he pretty much just writes her off immediately. Mm hmm. Then that's our first introduction after that to um, Drayton at the chili competition. Mm-hmm. We don't care the background of this person. He is doing something for the community, and uh, we can just like turn the blind, blind eye. Ignorance and is not, bliss. Mm-hmm. They ask him, What makes your chili good? And he just says something like, Don't skip on the meat. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm amazing. Yes, you're so right. And they don't bother to ask anything else. When we buy our meats in the store, we don't ask how we're... Most of the time, we don't ask how how is that pig raised or how how is that cow treated at all. It, the, as long as we get mm-hmm. it. The meat yeah. is so divorced from life at all because it's wrapped yes. in this clean, beautiful like plastic and it just looks... It, it, it's like shown like the cut of it you know we have these iconic images of what a steak looks like and what like the color like, of it yeah and it's like oh yeah. that looks good to eat it's there is no association there's no blood there there's no like yeah. anything else it's just a steak as if it was picked off of a tree i mean that scene when chop top shows up for the first time is Frickin', that is one of the few moments where they let moments stretch out silently. So, yes. Really long. Very creepy. Give me a tour. And then and she says the tour uh, is going to be a quick tour and it ends with an exit sign. Yep. Mm-hmm. So many greens, blues, and yes. yellows lighting everything. The background, them, mm-hmm. um, their shadows, everything turned to this crazy colors, which again... That's what their layer looks like too. It's yeah. all these different bulbs, all these different mm-hmm. lamps, these different colors. We have now entered a unknown world mm-hmm. in this story. We're we're leaving the ordinary world and we're going into the strange land, and it literally looks different. She runs off and runs into yet another reference from the first one with the sliding door. That sliding door which was danger in the first movie, actually is providing her protection mm. in this movie. And, and meanwhile, that's when LG comes back. It's just such a disorganized, like, I'm like kind of hitting you, like yeah. kind of trying to kill you, but I'm just more... Having, having fun, fun with it. Yeah. Chop Top. Uh, he's very hip, like hippie. He was dressed he's like a hippie and he yeah. kept going like this. Yeah. Music's life. He Music is life. With his sunny Bono wig. <laughs> <laughs> you killed my bone away. And my then like he, like tie dye kind of like long mm-hmm, sleeve, mm-hmm. Uh, like a brown mm-hmm. jacket with pins all yep. over. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting seeing him as a, uh, a Vietnam vet, but then being in that mm-hmm. sort of mm-hmm. hippie yeah. attire. He does this like great entry of like presenting the the chainsaw and then shimming. Mm-hmm. He's like, yas, I'm about to kill you. Yeah, no, it's his like, it's oh. his battle dance but also like his like mating call yeah almost like in both he uses it a lot and the image of the chainsaw and the idea of it is also very intermingled with what he how he thinks about sex Mm -hmm. and family too yes is kind of what is established later yes Yes. but in this scene specifically definitely about sex (laughs) he doesn't choose to touch her with his hand in this moment 
he is touching her with the chainsaw. It's keeps an repeat- extension of him. Yeah. 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 She keeps repeating, how good are you? How good are you? Yeah. How good are you? Which is like a tie with sex, but also like, like, is there any good in you? He seems he to come. Out. He pulls yeah. out. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, destroys the room, wrecks it, and, and runs off. So it follows him to, <laughs> I think it was a... It was like a historical amusement park. Amusement park. Yeah, yeah, it was like an amusement park seeming of like almost Texas Alamo park. stuff yeah. and fighting Native Americans, like cowboys fighting Native Americans and slaughtering them. And that is what happens in the rest of the movie is underneath all of that. Yeah. Which was so true. cool. The, the, the ground, the ground opens up underneath her. Oh my God. The one trap door in she gets all of this. She swallowed to just, hell. And she falls away. Oh, she falls step. down. And then Lefty comes in with a skeleton arm and's like, here, yeah, take out. this. Grab That'll save it. you. And she's like, okay. And obviously, it, it was goes, always going to break. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. never yeah, going to be sturdy. Yeah. It's a about? brittle ass bone that's yeah. left outside in Texas. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. It's no tolerance. Yeah, like no tolerance yeah. for that. I was like, are you serious? Though right it now? seems very stupid. The imagery of that is kind of interesting because he, yeah. at the beginning yeah. of this movie, yeah, is a left hand. But also, at the beginning of this movie, oh, I didn't, I didn't at make the that beginning of this movie, he <laughs> reaches out to her because he needs something from her, knowing that he's going to lead her to her death, essentially. Ooh. He's now reaching out with a dead hand that she tries to take, oh, like shoot. she took this opportunity that he gave her in the beginning, mm-hmm. and he... We all knew that was going to yeah, fall. Yeah. It breaks. So then she falls down this hole. Yeah. Very long, deep <clears throat> hole. Slide Keeps going, going down. Yeah, there was a slide! Um, she falls into... The slaughterhouse. Uh, essentially, yeah. There's where they, they hang and mm-hmm. and store the meats. Mm-hmm. That, that uh, knowing that the, the guy who did the effects was in, like, Vietnam, and he probably had seen... Limbs. Limbs hanging in trees before. And, like, those limbs looked like old they look real meat, but like also they look they look fucking real yeah. they, they, they look really real leather face comes in and then oh yeah when he starts skinning mm-hmm. algae uh, i was like savini yeah he was really good with that um, and then holding yeah. it up little chainsaw oh, little, yeah, little, little baby chainsaw electric kitchen knife. <laughs> literally i was like oh he's got it he's got one for every size yeah, yeah. Got oh literally and then we know that he was gonna go face. to the face we were, gonna, we were waiting for it mm-hmm. yeah the face and he holds it up behind no, like I, in front of a, a lamp. He, I think he's doing that to see how good he skinned the... Yeah. Admiring his work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He finds her, and again, he's about to kill her, but then she says, no good. No good. Kind of like a dog. She has that power over him a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I think she realizes that in the first scene that they're together. And this scene, she is using that again. And then I think he does his best attempt to hide her, which is put the face on her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess he first puts the face on her and then dances, dances with, with her. her. Yeah. yeah. He just yeah. wants to be loved. He does. He just held up that face to the light as if admiring a piece of art. And then he gives it to her mm-hmm. as a sign of, I like you. It's yeah. like, I like you. This is my ring. Yeah, yeah. You. yeah, it's like something he's proud of and then gives it to her. There was that little like cut where, or like the, where we see, um, Lefty mm-hmm. kind of like set up his whole chainsaw like oh, bandolier God, yeah. or whatever, and then he walks through the two like statues mm-hmm. and like into basically the gates of hell, and he yep. like yeah. descends. He's and, screaming. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, ah, he calls he it the devil's playground, and then he makes it his mission. Really, like the only the only other time that he kind of comes back and is important is the very end, and we just see cut twos of him trying to like break the infrastructure. Do you think that? He knew that he was wasn't going to come back up. Yes, yes. absolutely, absolutely. I think, yes. I think from the get go, we know he's going to die. When yeah. she first sees him and he looks haunted and like gone, and he's like, "Go away! I'm doing this alone." I was like, "This man's dead. This yeah. guy has nothing to live for anymore." Uh, How is he LG alive? Is still LG is, alive. Mind you, he's skinned. His face is skinned face is off. off. His chest is off. His leg is off. There's like, this that he, that shot of like that full body shot when he finally stands up for the first time and you just see yeah. 
every you see the chest open you see the leg open you see the face off it's like whoa the slaughterhouse or i guess whatever their meat yeah i guess it is their slaughterhouse mm -hmm. in their compound when she leaves it for the first time it's made of all bones yeah, and like or just so at least cool. adorned with like mm -hmm. bones everywhere and then that's the first time that we really start to see the rest of their house. Like the production oh, design yeah. was It was so incredible. cool. I would want to run around. Shit. I want a haunted oh house God. like yeah. that. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? That How was, amazing. That was the thing about the set was it was so big that it felt like the actors could actually have room to run around and yeah. play. Yeah. Literally, yeah. they do that. Yeah. There was just so much in there for them to play with. And that's the first time that we really see uh, the three main villains together in their element cooking the meats, interacting with each other. Oh, this was the first time I wrote down Nomland. Uh, Chop Top kept yelling, Nomland, Nomland, oh, talking about Vietnam. Yeah. And he says that a lot. And it's just, again, going back to his backstory of being a Vietnam vet, what did that do to him? What did the shit yes. that, what did the shit that the government was making him do in war and the chemicals that they were spraying in the jungles, what was that doing to these soldiers? Mm -hmm. How is it really affecting them and their mental state? In this case, was obviously a worst case scenario, but it goes back to America created this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They made him like that. Mm -hmm. They made him, they literally put a plate in his head and remade right. him into this insane, crazy person. And he's like, go and get her. Go get her. So he goes and tries to get her and that was then, a really cool chase scene too. Oh my god! Where she's running, she goes. Yeah. And she go. We get to the tunnel with yes. all the lambs, mm -hmm. and she's running so cool. down it. And you're seeing all the past victims. Yes. She's like running through their history. You of can death. hear them. There yes. were screams. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There were screams. Go get her, get her, boy. Mm -hmm. You can hear that, and then yeah. her only exit is then collapsed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. By uh, by Lefty. Lefty, yeah. Lefty is the one fucker. that again. <laughs> is keeping and putting her in mm. these yeah. dangerous situations for his, his own benefit. vengeance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right before he collapses the tunnel, he finds his brother, Franklin. Oh, uh, yeah. Like the skeleton of his brother, and then in the, the, wheelchair, in yeah. the light in the hand turns on, and then just like, we cut to see Lefty's face, and the light just slowly dies on his face. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, all hope is lost. All, all hope is lost. inside of him mm -hmm. is gone. She's trying to break up with him. She's like, I don't oh, think, yeah. 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 I don't think, think this, this is going to work. work. You, gotta you gotta let me go. Yeah. You gotta let me go. Yeah. Drayton and Chop Top come in, and they realize it's Leatherface's girlfriend. Drayton is talking about it's sex or the saw. Mm -hmm. And the saw is oh, family. Yeah. Sex. Mm -hmm. So it's always yeah. the saw. Like we saw on The Fly last night where sex becomes intermingled with last night it was his work mm -hmm. and again pretty much tonight it is the work of slaughtering it's intermingled and mm. the then the morals become intermingled i think we just feel so much sympathy for him because he is a big grown kid mm -hmm. if he what if he was able to talk and make choices and not seem so like like you know like a dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we wouldn't have any sympathy because we did right. it for the other yeah. characters that talked. Absolutely. Um, talked a lot. So I think this is the only reason why we're like, fuck, like, we need him to also realize and not kill. That's the brilliance of the character, I think, is he's literally covered in death. His face is made of death. Mm -hmm. But inside of him, we can still recognize something that human. is human. Yeah. This and then we go to the dinner, dinner scene. scene. As they bring Grandpa in, there's this really cool, long crane shot they're they're pulling away from yes. her and they're going out uh -huh. all the yes. way to reveal the dope set yeah they take him in his he, wheelchair and put he him looks dead yeah he looks dead and but and drayton says he's 137 years old mm -hmm. they established ah! that he is beyond how old any person should be i would mm -hmm. not want to be alive kind of thinking like okay this person's been eating humans this whole time mm -hmm. they're kind of established oh wow is there power in eating humans? Mm -hmm. yeah. Lefty descends. Lefty. Finally, Lefty comes in, bring in the, singing, bring in the sheep. Yeah. Drayton's first tactic is to bribe him. Yeah. With he brings money. Out a massive wad yeah. of cash. With money, yeah. And he's like, how, how much, much will it take? Yeah. Money is the only thing that Drayton understands. It's all he talks yeah. about the whole time, and it's this idea of do I'll do anything for money. He is a character that's I guess kind of showing the depravity of man when it comes to greed and comes to what you'll do for that cash. 
even though it seems like they're not spending it, it doesn't matter yeah. if you spend it. It's about they have it. having it. I got that that big wad. It. And then oh, Chainsaw Fire. Chainsaw Fire. Chainsaw Fire. Yeah, yeah. Very Star Wars-esque. Oh, my God. That made me crack up. I was like, man, this is my and favorite then Star Wars thing. This, right? <laughs> oh, Lefty yeah. stabs <laughs> Leatherface through the stomach. And the chainsaw goes out the other side. And then the, the chain is still moving yeah, yeah, through yeah. his body. Like, it's still moving back there. It was, it was real pretty, cool. It was pretty, it was pretty cool. epic, and that mm-hmm. makes sense for Leatherface to die. He lives by the saw, dies by the saw. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That's always been a thing. That's always been his thing. Well, and then he gets blown up by the grenade. And, and then, then she climbs up. She's They're climbing up. That was up. fun. I loved that sequence of him, like, getting her, and then her kicking him down, and then her coming back up. I thought it was so cool. Yeah, it was a very much... You're, she's struggling to climb yeah. up to yes. the top. She's This is the final climax, climbing to the final climax and she's struggling to get up there and eventually gets away from him but he catches up to her in grandma's room grandma dies as soon as she takes the chainsaw out of her hands Mm -hmm. so she's taken the mechanism that they've used to live on for so long Mm -hmm. out of her hands and that's when she finally dies Mm -hmm. but also it kind of seems like the power was brought to another person as soon as that chainsaw was transferred because she was struggling to turn it on and chop top comes over and starts slashing her back that in itself would have brought me down and you know as a person yeah it just didn't affect her as much as we thought it would have yeah because she's just focusing on getting that chainsaw absolutely it's but it's that transfer of power of she just like came from hell and went up and we are presuming this is heaven, mm-hmm. you know, mm, at yeah. least to them, because that is where grandma is. And it's like this, like, purity kind of thing. Everything was white. Um, and she's just like, I conquered this yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was so funny. The chainsaw wins in the end. No, oh, the chainsaw always wins. Mm-hmm. Because the chainsaw keeps going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keeps going on. All right, wow, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Yeah. Oh, right. another sequel. Right. Another, yeah. sequel. Yeah. another sequel. I think that was the I think that's the last sequel that we'll be watching Aww. in the rest of this movie. Yeah. But oh well. Wow. We got some other we got some other good ones. Yeah. Until next year. Until next year. Okay. More, more. We'll do the same time ones. next year. Third, number three. All the threes. Wow. All right, let's okay. let's round this out with uh y'all plugging yourself. At Mari Duckler on Instagram, I sing. Boom. Mm-hmm. At Color Me Leslie. I'm uh, colorful. Uh, season three, episode four, podcasts wherever you want to look for them. Beep beep, Richie T on Instagram, and also check out Playground Social, which is the studio that we're recording this at. It's right here, right now. Thank you again, y'all, for yeah. coming by for this bloody, bloody mess. Mm-hmm. But until then, till next time, tomorrow, let's get spooky. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.